This is an example of solving a uh, circuit involving multiple batteries. Uh, example of how to use Kirchhoff's loop laws to solve for the current when there is more than one battery. Uh, and this is actually solution number two. I've already solved this problem once. I'm going to solve it again, uh, making some different choices. So if you haven't looked at solution number one yet, I would suggest you start there and then check out solution number two. Uh, in either case, for both solution 1 and 2, I'm going to use the same four steps to solve the problem. I will start by guessing the direction of the current uh, in each part of the circuit. I'll then go around each loop in the direction that I think the current will flow and apply Kirchhoff's voltage law. Uh, if I go through a battery in the sort of usual direction from minus to positive, I get plus the battery voltage in my loop equation. If I go through a battery in the opposite direction, from positive to negative, I get minus the battery voltage in the loop equation. And at the end, when I solve for my current values, if I get a positive number for current, it means I guessed correctly about the current direction. And if I get a negative value for the current, then it means I guessed incorrectly. I still know the value of the current, but the negative no number tells me that it's flowing in the opposite direction as what I guessed. So here's my circuit with two batteries. This is the same circuit as I solved in solution number one. So I want to start by guessing the direction of the current. And in this case, I'm going to guess that the 10 volt battery is strong enough to push the current in all of the other parts of the circuit. So I'm going to guess that there is some I total coming out of the 10 volt, out of the positive side of the 10 volt battery, that then comes down and splits into I1 which will go backwards through the 5 volt battery and some current I2 that will go down into the 4 ohm go down and pass through the 4 ohm resistor. Uh, this is again just a guess and it's a different guess from what I made in solution number one. Uh, again I have current splitting up in one point so what I'm calling I1 and I2 here sum up to give me I total. And notice over on the other side of the circuit, uh, I1 and I2 combine together on the right side so that I get I total going through the 7 ohm resistor up top. So I'm going to start, start by going through my top loop in the direction that I just guessed the current will travel. Uh, I go through the 10 volt battery from minus to positive. So positive 10 minus 5 because I go through the 5 volt battery in the opposite direction from positive to negative. Minus 5 times I1 is the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor. Minus 7 times I total is the voltage drop across the 7 ohm resistor. And Kirchhoff's law says that that has to add up to 0. My other loop is around the outside of the circuit. Again, in the direction that I guessed the current will flow. Uh, 10 volts from the 10 volt battery. Minus 4 times I2 is the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor. Minus 7 times I total is the voltage drop across the 7 ohm resistor. And this adds up to 0. Again, I have two uh, loop equations. I want to write everything in terms of I1 and I2. So I replace I total with I1 plus I2. And I get two equations with two unknowns. Again, I want to combine these in a way that gets rid of one of the things I don't know. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to do 7 times the first equation and add that with negative 12 times the second equation. That should cancel out I1 for me. Uh, when I do that, I get negative 85 plus 83 I2 equals 0. I can solve that for I2, and I get 1.024 amps. Uh, this is a positive number, so the direction I guessed for I2 seems to be correct. I'm now going to plug I2 back into one of my loop equations. So using that top equation, I replace I2 with 1.024 amps. I can solve this for I1. I get, in this case, a negative value for I1. And I defined I total to be I1 plus I2. So I have a negative I1 value plus a positive I2 value. I get 0 0.843 amps for I total. Going back to our circuit, uh, here is the current directions that I guessed at the start of this problem, along with the current values that I just found. 
I1, I found a negative value. So my direction that I guessed for I1 was opposite of what happens in the real circuit. I2 and I total were both positive numbers, so the directions I guessed for those were correct. So if I label my circuit, I get I total is 0 0.843 amps going to the left at the top of our circuit. Through the middle portion, 0 0.181 amps going to the left. I guessed that I1 went to the right, but when I did the math, I got a negative answer, so the current must actually be going to the left. And in the bottom, 1.024 amps going to the right. Uh, let's compare this very quickly uh, with the solution I got from solution number one. So solution number one is on the left. I got a certain value for I1, I2, and I total. Solution number two is on the right. I got different values for I1, I2, and I total because I defined I1, I2, and I total differently. But if you look at the diagrams, my actual conclusions about what's happening, what the value of the current is in each part of the circuit, and what direction the current flows in each part of the circuit, is the same. It doesn't matter that in solution 2 I guessed the direction of I1 incorrectly. I still can conclude at the end of the problem that I1 travels to the left. That, excuse me, that the current in the middle of the circuit travels to the left. So two solutions, two different guesses about the current direction, and at the end when I label what's happening in my circuit, both solution gives me the same conclusions.